podcast episode 47. <laughs> All of the 47. February 26, 436. February 26th. The great flood of 2019 has subsided. Temperature is 48 degrees. Really nice day today. Are you ready for podcast? I don't know if I'm ready. I mean, can you ever be ready for podcast? Just random questions from strangers that I'll never meet? How much podcast do you have in you? It's, uh, I don't know. We got a lot of podcasts? I have a lot of podcasts. It just depends on how interesting your questions are. If your questions are interesting, I can go as long as you want to go. Have we done If your ones? questions are lame, then, I mean, I can only answer so many lame questions. Did we not do these ones? Is that why they're up there? I don't know. Huh. It's quite ponderous. And then these ones fell down, so I'm going to be missing those ones. What are these from? <clears throat> it's different. It's a different font. This is 42. Ah. Uh, this is 42, because I wasn't here Friday. So we didn't shh, do one. Nobody knows that. I didn't do one on Friday. Nobody knows that. You alright? What's going on? You alright? Did you see that? You too much, uh, too many stimulants? What are you taking? I'm actually Super well, Greens? Was that Super Greens? Super Beets. Somebody, super Beets. Somebody on live feed actually told me they take Super Beets. I'm like, you know that's all sugar. Sugar. Yeah, you might as well just eat sugar. Um, we'll do, um, 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 where are we at? Episode 42. This is in response to episode 42. Uh, Rick Hunter, these videos have been a lifesaver at work. Your life lessons are priceless. Thank you, John and Scully. I wish I had some good life lessons for you right now. Uh, the microwave won't dry your cat. That's a pretty good one. Don't wear spurs on a waterbed. Never wear your spurs on a waterbed. Five pounds of ten flour pounds. makes, ten pounds of flour makes a big biscuit. Mean biscuit. Mm, I think it makes a big biscuit. You've changed over time. These are all <laughs> yours, and you have changed them. It's ten pounds of flour makes a. We have biscuit. to grow, John. You can't. Right. You you actually modified. You can. You, you actually have to grow. Went minimal. You have to ten grow. Ten pounds of flour answer. makes a mean biscuit. Yeah, it does make a mean biscuit. You, don't. Try How much butter mine. would you use on a ten pound biscuit? I have a ten pound loaf of bread out there. I've been nibbling the way at it. That's why I follow. It's very dense. That's why. That's why an hour after I eat it, I'm like. <laughs> It's very dense. Uh, Scully, his comment, every time you eat bacon, a Muslim gets his wings. Love the parody of it. It's Wonderful Life. Great patch idea. It's 100% true. Love, love, love. John's passionate passionate tactical business rants. Bring business. Don't do stupid stuff on video. Take care of business. Right on, John. Uh, U.S. citizens, heed my warning. Love your country. Don't let psychopaths destroy the best example of national constitution the human race has ever conceived it's been desecrated enough with totally unconstitutional federal and state law which the only purpose is to establish socio-economic previsibility and guarantee control of your nation no to 1984 yes to 1776 Man, you got some big fucking words in there. I'm yeah, not even big, sure how I read them. Big. 17. Yeah. I mean, what are you going to do? You, you, we elect these officials that are supposed to represent us. And if it's all, it's if all, they want to, it's all, it doesn't matter to them which one we elect because yeah. they're both their boys. They're all, they're all going to have the same plan once they get there. It's all the puppet show. It's the same dude fucking pulling the strings. It's just like all the shit, all the shit. That the Senate is trying to pass all the shit that the Democrats are trying to pass right now because they control is it the House they control now or the Senate? I don't know which one. But all the shit they're trying to pass right now is all shit that they could have passed under Obama, but they didn't put up for legislation or vote because they knew it would be the end of their careers. So when they when they put up a like the they're putting a, an assault weapons ban through, they're all gonna vote on it and be like, assault weapons ban and it's going to go nowhere, and they know it's going to go nowhere, and that's the only reason why they put it up. Same thing with the, you know, AOC's New Green Deal, you know, they didn't even vote on it. <laughs> they haven't even taken it up to vote because it's such a piece of shit. You know, but they're all still talking about it. You know, it's not her New Green Deal. It was authored fucking nine years earlier. It's literally verbatim word for word on something that was put forward fucking almost a decade ago. But... Uh, did either, uh, how do I re, how well, do I, I leave title, reviews so. on your gear that I use? Uh, make a YouTube video. Yeah, YouTube video, and then make sure you CC us. Uh, did either one of you send your children to private school? I love hearing about Camden, so how are the government schools there? My kids did not ever go. Well, yeah, when they were younger, they went to private school. Um, but for the most part, it was, it was government school uh the government schools here are are good for the most part i mean 
especially for small town. Yeah, I didn't. I I didn't. So all my kids went to regular schools. I watched a video from Venezuela. A woman filled her car gas tank with for less than the cost of a bottle of water or a small piece of candy, but no food to be found. It well, it depends too. You got to understand that down there they use a uh, in order to in order to supplement their income. So they export or well, they want to export a lot of oil. That's what they were doing until we shut them off. A lot of those cars are ethanol. They're running off of corn, actually. They're not running off of fucking, uh, off of regular fuel. That's why if you have a Ford car, any any of your Ford vehicles that are gas are also ethanol because they had to do that to import those vehicles down, uh, down there into Venezuela. So they're actually using food to make fuel so they could sell oil. And I don't, I don't know how correct it is, but I, I have heard numerous, numerous times that one gallon of ethanol takes eight gallons of diesel to produce. Um, I watched the video, we did that one. Uh, Stanley Kubrick, Stanley Kubrick did Full Metal Jacket and I saw the film at the cinema. Boy oh boy, did that film make an impression on me. Then we got down the rabbit hole. One of Mr. Kudrick's earlier films, Clockwork Orange, was withdrawn in the UK whilst Mr. Kubrick <clears throat> was alive at the request of Kubrick himself. Many people thought the film had to be banned. However, this was not the case. Kubrick himself asked Warner Brothers to withdraw the film from the UK market. It went as far as the film not being uh, it went as far as the film not been shown at any cinemas in the UK and not being available for purchase on any format throughout official High Street store. Once Kubrick died, then Warner Brothers were free to resubstitute the film both in the cinemas and for sale for home viewing. Now, for me, the part of this tale that hooks me in is upon the film's initial release in 1973. I didn't realize it was that old. I was born in 71, I think. It created or was believed to have created copycat violence within youth culture and law enforcement put it on Stanley that the film was the cause of the problem. On the back of this, Stanley made the decision to ask that the film be withdrawn. But there's the rub for me, the main themes of the film being crime and punishment and authority control methods and the political game being played, I cannot help myself but see that at the time the film put forward many ideas into the public's domain that made the powers that be unhappy and the powers that be controlling elite, whoever you like, did all within their power to shut down this film and the themes contained within. Anyways, just my five penneth worth on a happier note, the Bad Teeth Collective package is almost ready. <laughs> Um, so Clockwork Orange does have a lot of a lot of themes in it, and uh, most of those themes are very anti-government. If you notice at the end of the movie when it gets his final beatdown, it's by his other droogs. So you're talking about how the the bad guys become the cops, um, and then all those social experiments at that time, which is interesting, all that stuff that they did with him when they put him in prison about you know re-education and shit like that. At that time period, there was a lot of people. That were pushing for those kind of things in law enforcement to where you reprogram criminals and doing all kinds of experiments on them and shit like that. So it's a it it's an interesting it's an interesting take and it's a really good movie. I well wasn't that kind of like what the Manchurian Candidate? Was yeah, supposed I, to be? I don't and see what how was our program. Oh, our LSD programs. Uh, yeah, that can't remember. Programmable the Warriors, yeah. whatever it was called. So I mean, it's a it's a very that's a very good movie, Clockwork Orange. <laughs> And there is a ton of stuff in there, but I can't imagine that uh, violence became more after that movie. He was making that movie as a perspective of the violence that already existed. He didn't make it up. Also, tickled to visiting Chernobyl, I have no doubt that it's very interesting and well worth the outlay of time. But, thank you, I'll stay home, sat on my fat arse, what where there's cups of tea, it's nice and warm and not as radioactive. I wonder, do they really, do they really talk like that? Yes, they really talk like that, John. That's proper English. Leave them alone. Um, yeah, I don't know if I want to go to Chernobyl. I mean, I'm old, so 
Might get eaten by wolves. Who knows? Yeah, it might get eaten by wolves. Or trampled or the, the spiders down by and, those long-haired Siberian ponies. The spiders in the red forest might might snatch me up. But the look on Scully's face when John talks about giving up bacon, man alive, my thoughts exactly, Scully. What good is life without bacon? That shootout would get you into the National Geographic. Not sure what he's talking about. Thirteen magazines. That shootout would get you into the National Geographic. When is Master Sergeant Booker t-shirt coming out? The Sergeant Major Booker? Sergeant Major. T-shirt coming out? I don't know. <clears throat> from the student loan discussion from episode 44, y'all are freaking right. I took loans to get an engineering degree and then paid them back. If you can't afford to pay for liberal arts classes and take loans to get them, you should be prepared to sacrifice a big part of your quality of life to pay back those obligations. I think a lot of people take those loans and stay in school exactly for to stay in school yeah, because they can party they can. and they've got some pussy on hand and fucking live in the dorm and their parents will supplement them. It's all, it's really not about making a future. It's about not having a fucking present. It's really about not having to go get a real fucking the, job right now. When you take a hundred, when you take a hundred and fifty thousand dollar school loan out. So Especially you can, when you haven't even made a thousand dollars a month. When, so you can get a job when you graduate college that only pays $38,000 a year, mm, there might be a problem there. Forgiving student loan debt and at taxpayer expense would be split, spitting in the face of those of us who lived up to the promises. Screw those losers who can't think past this afternoon. These podcasts are working. I'm hanging around, learning the material, pattern, pattern and thread scrap jargon. I have a couple of ideas for tool bags, so expect a new customer soon. Uh, Scott needs right on. Right on. A black and red Lamborghini. Black Euro, and red. Urus SUV would be fucking sick with combat cocks embroidered on the headrest. <laughs> it would be. That would be nice. John, thank you for having the raid red knife pouches made. You said someone has to be the first to wait for them, so I jumped on them. I have been a customer for a while and have had nothing but great experience with SOE. My wife and I love listening to the podcast and watching the videos. Thank you. The video's got to be terrible to watch. We're just standing here. Thank you to you and the SOE team we need to do for something. all you do. Looking forward to seeing all the Blade, all you at Blade 19. Can you even reach that? Huh? Oh, you're fine. <laughs> baby shark, 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 baby shark, shark, shark. That's not how it goes. No, I don't know. Baby it's... shark, do, 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 do. <laughs> baby shark, do, 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 do. Did you see the, the one? I know you probably saw it, the one that Amanda shared of the girl singing it on the, mm -mm. the crackhead girl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the crazy thing is there was fucking 42 comments, everybody talking shit. I said, you know what none of you have said? None of you have said have said that you wouldn't fuck that bitch. <laughs> You're only you're only you're only talking mean about her because your buddy see you. That's like the moped, fun to ride till your friends see you. And I said, and the other half of you, half of you didn't say you'd fuck her, and the other half of you just got done fucking her. <laughs> uh, hey John, you were talking about the homeless in Louisville. I live in Louisville. An interesting thing is that two weeks before the Kentucky Derby, you won't see a single homeless person. The uh, you know what? All those horses around for the Kentucky Derby, all those fiberglass horses. I love fucking carousel horses. I love carousel horses. I don't know why, but I want to go and fucking collect those horses up. They look, you, they're probably really heavy. Wouldn't you want a carousel? To okay. go with your carousel Yeah, horses? but I want to collect the horses. Horses first? Once we have enough, then we'll get the carousel. All right, all right. There's probably, because that's probably the easy part to get, because all those people with single carousel horses, they came off the carousels. Yeah. If you got all the horses, that'd be the expensive part. So if you can find them one by one... And then got the carousel? Yeah, I'm sure somebody has a carousel sitting in their backyard. Uh, the week after Derby, they're all back. Next time, get out of downtown. Louisville has a lot to offer, but downtown sucks. We just stayed in a hotel downtown. Um, where we were going, the really, really big uh, antique stores are downtown. Because that's where all that old architecture and shit. We went, we went all the way up into what's fucking this next state, Indiana. We were in Indiana, too. Uh... The bigger question is, what do they do with them? Yeah, where are they in jail? Yeah, what do they do? FEMA camps, Walmart camps. Where are, they, where are they stuffing them all in? I don't know, tunnels or something. Police what, what cruisers. Are, police cruisers. They just drive them around town. They put them on a. They put them on a bus and just drive them around. They for pay two Uber weeks. to ca cap, keep them captive. What do they do with them? 
John, a tank top water heater is a must for large capacity tubs. Some have them built in, but I would use a separate due to serviceability. Thanks for explaining the stitching to us. Oh, that's not a bad idea, Fraser, for like a tub. cast iron tub. I remember in home ec class in the 90s, a kid literally snapped the needle off into the bone of his finger. Yeah, we've seen that happen. Uh, five years later, he cut his thumb off on a bandsaw in wood shop. That's he, natural selection right there. He was that consistent. Yeah, he, I That's wonder what he's doing now. right there. Right? Yeah, he's probably dropped a car I'll lift he, on himself. I'll bet he works at a, uh, he's a, at a, works for the school system in wood shop or something. He's only got three fingers on him. Yeah, Mr. Hooten. That was our wood shop teacher that was missing some fingers. Men don't use emojis, fucking things. Bitches do. I hate them, fucking things. I need to lose my gut. Me too, Ken. I need to lose my gut. And I hate fucking emojis. Um... Space may be the final frontier, but it's filmed in a Hollywood basement. That line is from the song Californication by the Red Hot Chili. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought you I thought that dude made it up. I thought it was pretty fucking good though. Yep, space, the final frontier. They they just sent the first or uh Virgin Galactic just sent the first person in space. That Bronson Bronson still some, in that company? Some fucking billionaire probably got a ride in space. I've used the UV light system before and used it for my family cabin in Idaho. It's really a pain in the ass kind of system, and it requires you to reset the water frequently and swap out the light. Can be a tad pricey. We pull from a well, so it's necessary. Other than that, if you need it, get it. Are you talking you're not talking about the Asteri pins, right? You're talking about a whole house yeah, UV whole system. House system. How do you know when you need to, like, how do you know when that light quit working? Because you look down and there's, like, tadpoles in your water again? I, well, I'm assuming that when you walk by the the closet or wherever it's at, the blue glow is Halt! Right there. Replace yeah. light or you will die. You, will, little, you yeah. will receive severe anal seepage. You know, I think that's, I think that's uh, the Back to the Future where he goes back to the Wild Wild West and uh, he meets... He meets his great great grandfather, and they're they're eating dinner, and the guy's like pours him a glass of water, and you just see <laughs> like it just came right out of the river, and fucking shit's floating up in it. And sh we we've drinking a lot worse. Oh, this is a good little, little uh, E. coli ain't gonna hurt you. Hey, John, heard you talking about being up in Louisville. Next time you're up here, if you want to do some cool shit and don't mind a wee bit of trespassing, on a shallow chance you may have to. Outrun an overweight elderly security guard. Hit me up. We have a ton of old, down, old rundown historic sites. I'm sure you've heard of Waverly Sanatorium. Oh, we'd love. To I go. can do you one better. I'll just fucking. We'll just day rate the sanatorium, and we'll fucking have access to it without having to outrun the fat security guard. He'll be there to keep people from coming in there while we're there. Um, but what else you got? We can. We can totally. Uh, we can rent the fucking the whole building out for a day. That's not a problem. Um, That's I, in Louisville. Yeah, yeah. It's, well, it's right outside of Louisville. I believe the Great Flood in the Bible wiped out the technology from the past that we can't understand today. What are your views on the Great Flood? Um, there's a lot of evidence out there to say what you're saying is true. Um, Atlantis, look that up. Look up um, some Sumerians. We know all those big artifacts in Egypt were there prior to the Egyptians. Um, we know the Egyptians did not build them, but rather, you know, rested there. Um, all those portals are giant. The doorways are giant. Um, all of the inscriptions show that something came from space, as they do in every civilization around the world that has any kind of large monuments. They are all very, very uh, massive. And all of them, including Native American Indians, they all depict something coming from space um every, every fucking civilization has that in common um look up mud flood also that's uh that's some interesting shit you've got to you got to watch they won't come they won't come right out and say fucking space aliens but look at all the mud flood stuff that's pretty that's pretty interesting too um, there's a almost every recorded history has a flood story so the chances of there not being some sort of flood story that are our flood that wiped out a bunch of people living there. I mean, just think, let's just say if you had a flood that, if you had a, a, a water catastrophe that took, I don't know, a hundred feet from the coast, most of the places that you know would be gone, would just disappear. I mean, fuck, 90% of the population in Australia lives right on the coast, so. Put in, uh, put in mud flood, like if you haven't watched any of it, just watch, 
just pick one of the bigger videos and just skip every five minutes forward. It's, it's interesting to see because they will show you monuments around the world right now that we all know. And you can see where there's a fucking mud, like mud flow, like yeah. wipe shit out. And they all have these sub basements and shit. And they basically built a ba they built a built fucking right building top. right on top. And a lot of them, hundreds of year old buildings, they all have, um, they call it free energy. That's what they're all getting at is that the add irons on a fireplace are not actually as a fireplace. It is a free energy device. And all of those big, huge buildings that have huge, huge, grandiose, um, and irons, you know, they all mm -hmm. have balls on top and shit. They all have a bunch of fucking antennas going on the roof. And they're like, well, you know, it's a it's a, um, a lightning rod. But they were stone buildings. Like, they didn't need fucking lightning rods. There was, grounded, there was no right? metal or anything to them. So, there's, it, it's weird. When, they, when you really start looking into it, it definitely raises a lot of questions. Um, you there, are, and there's actually a guy right now working on... There is a guy, he, he is working <clears throat> on this piece of equipment. I think they already have it. it I, I don't, that, to draw energy from the air? It draws energy directly from the air. The military is actually... So there's two things that the military has done recently that so is, no, no is pretty kick-ass. Is One, all the, all the armored vehicles now generate their own water. Which you think is crazy in the sense of your air conditioner always releases water. But all the armored vehicles now release their generate their well, not all the armored vehicles that are out there, but all our future vehicles will generate their own water. So you'll be able to get water from the vehicle without having to go anywhere to get that water. Off condensation. You off to condensation. Um, and that the other thing is they're <clears throat> they're really working on this device that pulls static electricity out of the air that will charge batteries. So you'll be able to use your phone or your you know radio or it'll be a phone by then but so there's that technology that technology is out there it's just we have to relearn it and why isn't it i mean of course it's out there they're doing it in the fucking space station wasn't it reclaiming all and recycling and oh well, they, they drink their own piss in the space station <laughs> uh, well so does bear grills where's, yeah. where's he at? yeah but bear, bear grill goes he goes straight from the tap what about, at least... the, what about the rumor that bear grills is actually travis haley because you've never there's seen probably him. some pretty good evidence that they've never, and Travis you've never Haley. seen you've never seen them in the no, same place together. You've never seen them in the same place together. It might be there might be something to that. I think it is something to yeah. It's just he just puts on a phony British accent. I think and so, so. Everybody th I think every, that's the deal. Everybody's confused. And I, I think Chris Costa is really um, Steve Irwin. Well, Steve. Ir well, no, that he's means not, his, he's not really dead. His alter ego is dead. He's he not. No. So are you saying that? Are you saying that? That Chris got so famous that he had to kill his alter ego, mm -hmm. even though his I alter Chris, ego was kind Chris of got famous and blew up um, because he killed off his alter ego, Steve Irwin. That's that's what I'm saying. That yeah. he, he had to kill his alter ego yeah, in I order to so. become more famous. And it probably has something to do with QAnon. What if Chris Irwin was actually getting more popular? He was getting more popular than Steve Costa. Than Steve Costa. <laughs> And that's why he had to kill him, because he was getting more popular and he was getting jealous of his alter ego. I think that's that's probably the deal, because they're about to bring dinosaurs back to life. You are absolutely preaching the truth about investing your hard-earned money. Put it right back into your business, where you could save on something in the future and make the job increase in production value. And absolutely fucking lootly on the fact being a hustler will be the biggest bet you can gamble on. You either are a hustler or you are not. And don't second guess being a Is this a rap song? Don't second guess being a hustler. You should you should put music to this. <clears throat> this is a nice tea song because they're better than those that don't. The only damn way to come from nothing and be something is to hustle your ass off and sacrifice your time until you're successful. People who apologize for being too busy are potential hustlers. However, people who say fuck off then have achieved hustle status so many so many people can't comprehend the overwhelming workload of a hustler and on that note i'm going to fucking bed two hours of sleep six hours of babies and 12 hours of steel mill hustling motherfuckers send that to ice tea you'll make a song of that <laughs> you're gonna it, be a millionaire you just hustled your way into a, a record it, deal i think it came from ice tea you just got yourself a record <clears throat> deal my friend 
the weapons collection. Uh -oh, I'm surprised. The collection. I'm surprised they reintroduced turkeys into your area. Them things can be held on natural snakes. I wish we had. Yeah, they're like giant roadrunners. I um, I wish we had a little more of them here. Turkey is my favorite wild game. Scully is right. I went with a silencer co harvester big bore for my ASR ring covers for 338 Lapua. And lower still and lower. Still need to pick up a pistol can, though. Never rent to family. It always becomes a problem. Yep, never rent to family. Old biz old buildings used oil lamps or gas lights for lighting before electricity. I don't know what the rest of that was. The same thing with uh, giving them money. Don't give your family... Don't, give any, don't loan anyone in your family money. Unless... Don't loan anybody any money. Well, and the longer that time goes by that they didn't pay you... The less they think they owe you. Unless you, you have it in writing. you've already decided that that money is gone. If you've already decided that money's gone, and six weeks from now your cousin, your third cousin from your mother's side comes and gives you that $100 back or whatever, then it's a plus for you. But for the most part, it just creates heartache. It just creates heartache in the in the mix there. I heard somebody talking about this in the uh, in the gym. They were talking about winning the lottery. In, in our gym? Yeah, in our gym. When? This is like two weeks ago. Times. Yeah. They were talking about winning the lottery. And one of the guys said, hey, when you, if you win the lottery, what you need to do is call up all your rel relatives independently <laughs> and ask them, <laughs> ask them if you can borrow $200. <laughs> and any of them that loan you $200, then they can, be in the, they can be in the winner's circle. Any of them that don't loan you $200, well, too bad. You had a chance to do something good. I thought I like that was it. interesting. Yeah, I like that. Who said that? It was the that one girl that not not the old well, I don't want to say the older girl, but the a female. One the female that's in there all the time, mm -hmm. and then uh, I mean it was one two of the people that are in there all the time, but <clears throat> one of the older guys found this turd burglar patch for you, Scully. The turd burglar patch. That's uh, good. Turd burglars. Vagrant catapults. BMX bicycles are welded onto it. We are also working on illegal alien model. We are just formulating the most attractive ranchero music mix. What is a vagrant catapult? Well, we take vagrants and we just. What is a vagrant? Catapult. Is that what they use in in Knoxville whenever the Kentucky Derby's coming through? We should uh, vagrant catapult. I think we should take. That's what we should do with all the vagrants. Just put them in Mexico. <laughs> It'd be so funny. Here you go. Here's some of your mother. Here's here's some of our trash. Thanks for sending yours. Yeah, that would be funny. At least at least the ones coming across work. Uh, light and shit. That's that's the thing. Like the motherfuckers coming across the border. So most awesome. of them work. All right, we got you all. We got you. You get you get shower. You get them. You get them showers. You get one of those mobile laundry mats. And you wash every, You wash all their clothes, and then you go. Hey, all right, but we, we, everybody's got to get on the C one thirty. Because we're going to take you to a place where there's plenty of food. We're going to actually fly you all to California. And then just, <laughs> boom, Baja, Mex Baja California land. Push them all out real quick. Take off. Yep, I like it. It'll be great. Like and, it. and the ones that come back, you know, they're determined. So it's good. Liked and shared. Well, once they've been in Mexico, on the in the wilds of Mexico, maybe they'll, maybe they'll get a job. Improve their life. Uh, liked and shared. Keep up the great work you do for my brothers in service and for... The FC ones, fucking civilian first class, like we are now that we are out. Thanks for all the podcasting here. I took a whole semester on nutrition and nursing school. Okay, right on, John. Nursing what, school, but doctors don't. What was inspiration listening to you go? That was an inspiration listening to go off on getting business done. Thanks, Scully. I took no offense from John. Great vids. Keep it up. Uh, Scully, what did John say? I don't know. I don't what know. did you say that was offensive? He's always offensive. Scully, a small return uh -oh. on investment RO system should work for you. A small RO. Reverse osmosis. Oh, uh, reverse osmosis? Good yeah. job on the doctor, doctor explanation in this video. I believe a good doctor is like a good mechanic. He figures out why one wheel or ball joint keeps getting sloppy, like a bad control arm or bushing. Any mechanic can keep bolting on parts without fixing the problem. Thanks for the podcast. I did a search on Pizzagate. As a result of your podcast, I've never been more saddened or disgusted. 
Oh, it's Pizza Gate. You guys are going to do great things with this podcast by informing the followers of theories. Wow, this is oh, fucking Jesus, long. So Go ahead. So long. Pizza Gate. So, for all you that have been in the Pizza Gate world, and there's a there's a um, an offshoot of Pizza Gate. It's Ellis. What's his name? Ellis. The Jason. billionaire. Yeah. Is it J- Ellis Edwards? Fuck, the billionaire in Florida... That owns the island. That owns the island and owns the airplane. That the federal government gave the complete... Lolita Express. Sweetheart deal to, basically... um, His name in him. He he gave such a... They gave him such a sweetheart deal that it has been re-looked at. So it's been a while since that guy's been prosecuted. But it's been re-looked at, and a federal judge just recently said that the... uh, that what the what the district attorney's office, what the federal prosecutors did, was illegal because they never let any of the victims know what kind of deal they were going to give this guy. So expect to see some weird shit go on because they're actually talking about the prosecutor now. The the prosecutor who gave that who actually signed off on that deal is in Trump's cabinet. I can't think of the guy's name offhand. He is in Trump's cabinet right now. I think he's labor secretary or something like that. There's a possibility that he could be arrested for the deal. 100%. If they start re-arresting people, and if this prosecutor gets arrested, you guarantee fucking tea they're going to start dropping names. Because the U.S. prosecutor did not give that sweetheart deal. That came from somewhere else in the Justice Department. So you guarantee fucking tea that some shit is about to go down. I'll bet Bill Clinton is shitting his fucking pants. God, they'll kill that dude. It'll end with him. Maybe. News that we would otherwise not be made aware of. I'm definitely looking forward to your daily podcast as well as getting up there to Tennessee and building out your shower and whatever else you guys need of me. I want to send some pictures of my tool trailer, also known as Shop on Wheels, mainly to prove your point about saving your money and putting everything you got back into your business. I came from nothing, literally. I was homeless at 16, and through hard work, frugality, and willingness to never quit, I have managed to provide a comfortable life for my wife and kids and myself. I learned to be a contractor by working nearly every individual trade until I was able to do to go out on my own. The sacrifices that my family and I endured was worth it because today we have everything we want. Gratitude for our life and our healthy respect for all those for those willing to work their asses off and get somewhere in life. As a business owner, I get to pick the jobs and customers I want and take as long or as little time as I deem necessary to go to do a good job and put my maker's mark on everything we build or fix. Thankfully, we are slammed and booked up through the spring. Nonetheless, I will always make time for those important to me, including my Camden family. Thanks again, John and Scully, for taking time from your busy lives to do these podcasts and inspire and entertain us daily. Respectfully, Jacob Chandler, Chandler Home Solutions. Okay, that's that's good. Th- thank you, man. It's good that that's you because I recognize your name. You would be amazed at how many times I'm like... Hey, we need to hire a guy. And a dude fucking hits me up on Facebook and he's like, I'm on the way. I'm on the way, yeah. And then fucking, he's like, I'll be there Monday. And then Friday, somebody knocks at the door and I'm like, are you going to fucking come in the building or what? I'm here to work. Oh, are you the dude I've been talking to? Yes. Okay, cool. How, what kind of saltwater aquariums do you have? I don't have any saltwater That's aquariums. That's not me. <laughs> the dude I was talking to said he had a bunch of saltwater aquariums. So we put this dude to work on Monday. Another guy comes. Another guy comes. I'm like, are you the saltwater aquarium guy? No. Nope. nope, but I'm here to work. Well, which? who the fuck are you? Like, two dudes showed up, and none of them were the motherfucker I was talking to on the fucking internet. <laughs> That's the way it is. That dude still hasn't shown up. I need a, I'm need. i going to need a so ramp. So my aquariums are still dirty. I'm going to need a ramp that I can get the M1 Abrams up on so I can get underneath it and clean all the mud out of the tread and stuff. So think about that. Beavers were hairy as hell in the 80s. They were, were they? Was it eighties? They were still smell. hairy. That, they, that held smell. I'm gonna have to get my, I'm gonna have to get my Playboys out and take you, a look at those. Why would you want to fucking have a furry beaver? Like it cuts your dick when you go in. Well, I don't, I don't think they had a choice, right? Why? When we, did they start shaving every, beavers? Everybody was shaving. That razors yeah, existed. But, eh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know when they started doing that. I have to, I have to look at my Playboy collection. 
In Podcast 42, John, someone told you Red Flag in Tennessee was passed. All I could find was S. Dickerson introduced the IT confiscation has begun in California. Right, yeah, I, I didn't see shit about it. As a matter of fact, I saw um, that it got voted down and did not pass and can't be voted on for several more years. Um, <clears throat> right now, everyone that registered at 80% AR is the target. Uh, after the apocalypse, if you're still here, you should issue SOE currency called Cox. This way, Nick can say, I need some, I need 10 Cox and have a plausible way out of saying huh. it. Um, He'll still he be looking doesn't for the have Cox. A, he doesn't have a problem with saying it. Yeah, he won't. He doesn't have a problem with skinning off his shirt. He doesn't have a problem with... I have the new video. I have the one-minute Nick video. Is it just a one-minute Nick video? It's glorious. Is it? It's very well produced. That's good. Uh, awesome podcast. Keep sharing it to Facebook. Just placed an order for a new smaller EDC belt and pelter wrap, and we'll get my current belt resized at some point. Silent Sniper, congratulations on uh, losing some size, man. Scully! Scully! I've been to Israel. Oh, yeah? We're going to India. Yeah, we're going to India. Same place, right? Any place out of the United States is all pretty much the same place. Uh, Scully! I've been to Israel. I quite enjoy it, but my biggest take away was do not give up your freedom for security. I got a picture of the Dome of the Rock mosque with a golden dome, while there, with a combat cock on the background. <laughs> that's awesome. It's on NSR's page. Yes, you need to Weston, send that to John. Weston, that's awesome. Why the fuck is it on yeah, NSR's you, you page? You need to send it to John, that picture of the cock with the rock of the dome. Why is yeah. it not on our page? The problem is, the problem... Is that the rock of Gibraltar? No, it is the... It's, it's a different rock. A different rock. The problem with, uh, when you say giving up your security for, you know, giving up freedom for security is, the reality is the Israelis have no choice. If we were surrounded, if They're we were surrounded, surrounded, yeah. If we were surrounded on all sides by enemies, I mean, we are. Which we kind of are. I mean, well, Tennessee. not really. We are pretty. Oh, Tennessee. Yeah, Tennessee's in the in the middle in the free zone. Um, if if Canada and Mexico were actually hated the United States and were shooting rockets that's in even, whenever they that's wanted even to, different though. Israel is like the size of fucking Tennessee. I know. Israel's tiny. You know what I'm saying? It's, so I'll bet it's small. we would give up. We we would give up a lot of freedoms too. I hear, I hear. I have a friend who, who's an air marshal and goes goes ends up in Israel all the time. Uh, I hear that the security at the airport is quite impressive as far as how they herd you and get you into the airport. Um, yeah, they do. You do give up a lot of freedoms for living in Israel, but once again, they're surrounded by people. There's nobody that they talk to. That borders them, that doesn't want to kill them, so creates it creates a bit of a security issue. But they still get to wear, they still get to have their M4 carbines down at the beach in their flip flops and bikinis. That's fucking awesome. Thoughts on the USS Liberty, Scully? That's the ship the Israelis mm -hmm. attacked when they were in Gaza and were not allowed to be. Yes, like you, I'm pro-Israel, but like me, would you like? Would you like answers as to why they stretch, stretched us? Uh, well, the the reason why... I thought the, the Liberty was a hospital ship. It is now, I think. Oh, the, it wasn't? Yeah, that, at that time it was actually a spy ship. The reason why the reason why they strafed us is because they were, they were hoping that the ship was going to get sunk. And then they were going to blame it on the Egyptians. They were trying to pull us into the war with... Uh, Egypt and Israel. And for reparations, we would have made Egypt give us their pyramid. So that is kind of, that is that is why they did it. They were trying to pull us into a proxy war and say that, you know, they would have immediately came out with a fucking uh, a statement that they saw the fucking Egyptians flying over there and it, they would have lied their asses off to get us to help fight the Egyptians. Uh, reality is they didn't need any help because there are no Muslim armies that are worth a shit. I'm 30 minutes south of Louisville. They had a big cleanup a little while back. It don't look good now, but before it looked absolutely fucking shitty. What is I, that? I'm it's sure, man. Of... Oh, Louisville, yeah. Uh, haha, ha, house poop. Past episode on dudes talking about AR pistols. Here is in the slave state of New Jersey. We are limited by 50 ounce pistol weights. P.S. Never repeat, never bring a firearm into southeast especially new jersey pistol weight yeah um 
They will take your shit and lock you up on a felony charge. There was a lady that lived in Philadelphia, PA, and got off on the wrong exit and had to cross the bridge into New Jersey. A cop pulled her over. She had everything legal to carry in Pennsylvania. Working single mother of three that worked the night shift. They locked her up and had felony charges and was going to jail. The governor had to step in and give her a reprieve. Nazi crats suck ass. I got bullets and Diet Pepsi. That's for lunch after the range. Um, I remember hearing about that. Yep, I remember hearing about it. Yeah, you got to be careful anywhere on the East Coast, man. I mean, they, they've actually busted people... Um, They've actually busted people that have had layovers in New York City. So I'm going to fucking Sri Lanka or some crazy shit to go hunt fucking buffalo. And they have pulled rifle cases off planes and busted people for bringing in. They've busted people at the airport. Now the problem is that's federal property. So technically New York City should have no fucking jurisdiction there whatsoever. But because the feds let... Local law enforcement have jurisdiction there. They've actually busted people that had no intention whatsoever of bringing a firearm into that fucking state. That, those fucking liberals are fucking insane. They are just completely insane. If you're a liberal, oh man, you, I don't even know how to. I don't even know where you got your education because you were a fucking idiot. Very entertaining and interesting as always. Would love a podcast just on what happens in Mogadishu. Rifle bags for long rifles. Um, I have relatives in Italy. I have been there several times. My cousin was driving us to the next town over and we drove over a one-way bridge. <clears throat> the locals call Emperor Tiberius Bridge. It is barely the width of a European car plus a small sidewalk. It's over 2,000 years old and they still drive over it. The Nazis tried destroying it during their retreat and the explosives couldn't do the job. The iconic thing, the ironic thing, is the Roman government required bridge makers to do the upkeep on them and withheld payment of, on bridges for 40 years to make sure they stayed standing. <laughs> that's, that's, fucking, that's fucking cool. That's fucking awesome. I'll tell you a Mogadishu story. Me and, me and uh, Travis Mitchell are running to the Humvee because we want to go to the PX and get something. And Chris is falling up behind. We jump into the Humvee. Travis looks at me. He goes, gun it. And I fucking hit the gas pedal as hard as I can. And I hear somebody scream just long enough to see that Chris had got into the fucking Humvee standing up. And he did a flip out of the back of the Humvee <laughs> and landed on his feet. It was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. But I almost <laughs> killed him that day. I'm sorry, Chris. I didn't mean to try and kill you. <laughs> Holy shit. Anybody that thinks they can make anything technological should be dropped into the woods with nothing and be asked how long until you make a cell phone. Civilization will collapse again. It has many times in the past. The question is, how far will it go this time? Think if researchers think we were down to 10,000 mating pairs, like Scully says then what kind of technology did we lose when it happened and what was lost yeah we get down to t we get down that low so you get down you get that that you get those numbers down that low you lose all technology there's not going to be any one generation in one generation and people will be fucking doing stick figures in the caves again you'll lose all of it you yeah there might be a fucking cell phone on the ground the next two generations will have no idea what that fucking strange object is. You'll ride, you'll ride horses through fucking cities and wonder who, what alien civilization came down here and built this crazy... Like Planet of the Apes. Yeah, just like Planet of the Apes. I found primary arms optics and especially the ACSS reticle, which is in Trigicon Optics now, to be the titties all of the BDC... I have, have been dead nuts on. I own several of them and have trained with them and have been fine for my basic use of shit hit the fan or herself. So great, great optics. Very durable. Uh, you know, they gave them to the Marine Corps and we've been using them for fuck, probably eight years, ten years now maybe. Uh, they don't even train with iron sights anymore. The new, the new weapon systems, they're actually talking about not even having backup sights. That's how fucking reliable those optics are. And, and now saying that, 
I've seen them break. I've seen guys break their guns, but or break their optics. But usually, that's one in a million. <sighs> Tired? I don't know. Did you you ate some bread before you came in here, didn't you? Like an hour ago. Mm, it's coming. Sorry. I had gave bad info. Tennessee red flag was submitted in both the House and the Senate. So, it hasn't passed yet. You said you didn't know me or care why I changed my name on here. I only asked... Isn't this primo, Nick? I only asked not to give me shit because I have heard you give people... No, we give people shit that are talking shit, yeah, under, if you're a, talking shit. under a fucking fake name. Yeah, if, you're, if you want to... If you're going to come in here and, and fucking take issue with something we're saying... And say we're wrong or talk shit. This is like this is this is our fucking our this is our deal. You're welcome to participate. If you don't like it, fucking just fucking go do your own thing. Make videos about us saying how we're wrong. But do it under a real name. Like we're standing here with our real names saying what we say. If you're gonna fucking be an asshole, yeah, just sign your it. name on it. Own it. That's yeah, all this we isn't care about, about I you. I don't care if you if you're gonna give us a piece of information and Thanks for the videos, guys. I appreciate the time you take to do them. I firmly believe your outlook has affected me in a positive way. Thanks. Please make people aware of the conventional, of the conventional, of the convention of the states and what it's about. Tennessee has already been accepted. It's the only way to get the federal government back into check. I don't believe that it's going to work the way people think it is. You, when you... When you open the door for possible constitutional amendments, you open the door for a lot of silly ass shit. And to think that the left is not going to get involved in the uh, get involved in that is kind of asinine. To think that they're not going to get involved into manipulating the Constitution in a way that favors whatever asinine bullshit they want to do. Think about it. I don't know. They're probably the ones that authored it. They're, this well, is probably their thing. It's uh, I know Shapiro's pushing it. There's a bunch of people pushing of they it. They are, but I, but I imagine imagine if up. imagine if that's their if they were smart enough to fucking get Shapiro to push their thing. Yeah, open up the Constitution for amendments is is, I mean, well think about it. It's worked once, good, and it's worked terrible once too. So, growing up. My dad had a 12 gauge shotgun and a 357 revolver in his truck. No one ever gave a damn. And I can remember once him being pulled over and the cop never said a word about it. Man, how times have changed. That's how it is here. <laughs> you get, yeah, they don't care. They fucking pull motherfuckers over left and right here. There's a gun in everybody's fucking car. I told, around. you know, coming from California and I took my concealed weapons permit, you know, in the, in the trifecta in Las Vegas. That's the only way you're going to get one. Um... Of course, it's no good in California, but, you know, they talk, They tell you, if you get pulled over by a police officer, you need to let them know, you need to let them know that you have a concealed weapons permit and, you know, where the gun is and blah, 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 when they pull you over with your driver's license and shit. They tell you that in the course. And so I always emphasize with Gina when we got ours here, I'm like, hey, make sure, you know, you let that police officer know it's officer safety. You, you want let him, him, to, you know, want him to be more at ease anyway. You want him to be more at ease, so give him your fucking your card and tell him, you know, that you have the pistol in the car and it's in your purse or whatever. And, and the first time she got pulled over, she did that. And the, the the cop was like, I don't give a shit. She goes, he's like, well, where is it? She's like, it's in my purse. And he's like, do you plan on taking it out? He goes, I don't care. You didn't need to tell me none of that shit. So it just depends on where you're at. I still say always err on the caution, always err on the side of officer safety. Because the problem is, let's say you don't tell him, you know, I look like a fucking uh, possible wanted suspect. Let's say you don't tell him that you have a concealed weapons permit and he goes back to the car. When he goes back to the car, he's going to run you and that's going to come up. Concealed weapons permit. He just turned his back on you. He just turned his back on you to go to the car and fucking fill out that ticket. Now he feels like a fucking dumbass because somebody with a gun had his back, was behind him. So, you know, it's always best to let them know. Just so, but just be like, hey, just for officer safety, you should be aware that I have a firearm on the car. Here's my concealed weapons permit. I, I still say do that, even though 
you don't you know, have the, to. You don't have to really. It's just like it's just it's like just being polite at night. I turn the lights on. I turn the lights on. My hands are where they can see them. The windows are down. Um, fucking beaver. That was the '80s. Beavers were different back then. You're all fucking retarded. Miss you, fuckers. Tyler Hatton. What bullshit? That's his wife. Yeah. Cause, cause oh, beavers in the '80s. Because because she ain't shaving. Wait a minute, Tyler. You've never seen an '80s beaver. What yeah, you, you like, weren't even born in the weren't even born yet. Basic training. Oh, here's here's Tyler again. Uh -oh. Basic training wouldn't be basic with at least getting cussed at. People are getting babied too much nowadays. Tyler, how do you know? You don't even leave your house. How do you how do you know what the fuck is happening in basic training nowadays? <laughs> um, Scully approved Marpat hippo sweaters. That would be good. That would be good. Hippo sweaters. Hip hop apotamus. Marines I want to see him out here in the Kentucky River. My RDC once said. Cursing is not professional, but it's fucking effective. I think it's relevant. It is fucking effective, that's for sure. Even Lee Emery said you can through through pain and through pain and repetition you can get a recruit to do all the things you want him to do faster. That's how it should be with employees. It used to be that way. When we go to India. When we go to India. When we go to India and we set up Camden, Tennessee, India. You can actually you can actually punish your employees corporately. Camden, Tennessee, India. The Bombay Corporation. The Camden, Tennessee, India Corporation. Camden, Tennessee, Camden, India. Tennessee India Trading Corporation. Trading Corporation. Hmm. The South Seas. Might work. They have a lot of they have a lot of dudes over there that can never get married. So we bring women from here over there. Uh, well, we go to China. China's got the same problem. We go to Mexico. We get Mexican okay. women and bring them oh, to man, India. Oh man, they would. God, they would love Mexican women. They would love Mexican women there. It'd be a little language barrier, but they would love. They'd Mexican figure women. it out. Mm -hmm. They'd figure it out. They'd love Mexican women. All right. We'll do this one later, another time. What? You quitting? You tired? It's five thirty. Five thirty. Yeah, we got. There's a ton of shit on that table. Right. I, need, I need photos and product shots and You're such a. Quitter. <clears throat>